Hi folks, we're going to take a look at this question uh, from the notes at the beginning of the solving polynomial equation section. So let's see what they give us. We've got a storage tank has the shape of a rectangular prism with a square base. Okay, so I'm going to start even before reading the rest of the question. Okay, I'm going to use a diagram to help me solve this problem. So draw a rectangular prism. Okay, and it's got a square base, meaning these two bottom sides are the same. Okay, and the length of the base is three meters less than the height. Okay, so there's two ways we can write this. If I call the height x, I know that the base lengths are going to be x minus 3, 3 meters less. But I notice here that they're asking me to work with the volume. So I know I'm going to have to multiply these three terms. I would get the correct answer perfectly well if I use these, but I'd rather call my side lengths x, okay? And then that means that the uh, height is going to be x plus 3. Okay? Not that this is going to make a big difference, but since I have to multiply all these 3, I'd rather multiply x times x than x minus 3 times x minus 3. So this still satisfies the conditions because the base lengths are still 3 less than the height. Okay? So just little things to keep in mind as you're doing these problems. So let's see what they tell us. They say determine the dimensions of the tank with a volume of 20 meters cubed, assuming that they must be integer values. Okay, so what we need is we need the volume of the tank to be 20 meters cubed. Now, of course, the volume is just given by the base, uh, area of the base times the height, which in this case here, area of the base is x squared and the height x plus three, the way I've set it up, and that's gotta be equal to 20. Okay, so what we have here is a polynomial equation, and we've seen how we're going to deal with polynomial equations, very similar to the way we dealt with uh, quadratic ones. Uh, we're going to distribute everything out, write it in standard form, bring everything to one side of the equation, and have zero on the other side. So here we've got x cubed plus 3x squared, and I'll bring the 20 to the other side of the equation, so minus 20 equals zero. Okay. Now, what we do here is we try to factor out this polynomial on the left to try to get uh, something in factored form equal to zero, and then we can solve the problem easily. Okay, so let's say I call this v at x. Okay, I'm just going to use that so that I can test my um, possible factors, because I look here, I see a cubic with only three terms, and I don't have any traditional factoring methods to solve this type of problem. So I'm going to go to the factor theorem, check out the, uh, the um, factors of 20. So start with 1 and negative 1, so I put v at 1, okay, here 1 plus 3 is 4, minus 20, not equal to 0, okay, very clearly. Negative 1, so this is going to be negative 1 plus 3 is 2, minus 20, not equal to 0. Let's try now the next set. Let's do 2. Okay. Uh, so here, 2. 2 cubed is 8. Okay. Plus 3 times 2 squared is 4. Plus 12 minus 20. And here we have 20 minus 20 equal to 0. So that works. Okay. So that means that x minus 2 is a factor of my polynomial. Okay. So now let's find the other factor. So we'll use synthetic division here. So cubic, please be careful that there's no x term. That means we have to add a coefficient of 0. So here we have 1, 3, 0 for the coefficient of x, and then our negative 20. And now we're dividing that by x minus 2. So we go through a process. 1, that gives us 2. 3 plus 2 is 5. 2 times 5 is 10. Add them up. 10. 2 times 10 is 20. And of course, when we add up the last ones, we expect to get zero as a remainder. So that uh, proves that x minus 2 was indeed a factor. Okay, so let's go back to our equation here. So now this left-hand expression can be written as x minus 2 times. And we use this here is going to be the quadratic that's left over. x squared plus 5x plus 10 equals zero. Okay. So we know that one of the solutions to this equation is 2, because it makes this first term 0, hence the whole expression 0. Okay, now it's certainly possible that there's more than one answer, so we could try to factor this second um, factor, which is a quadratic, and there's no two numbers that multiply to 10 and add up to 5. 
Okay, now remember what the question asked. If we go back to the question, it tells us that they need to be integer values. Okay, so if they're going to be integer answers, this would have to be factorable. I mean, for fun, let's check to see if there's any non-integer answers here. Okay, and what's great about a quadratic is you always have the quadratic formula to test uh, or to determine the zeros. So let's try to determine the zeros of this equation using the um, quadratic formula. So negative b, so negative 5 plus or minus square root of b squared, so 25 minus 4 times a, which is 1, and c, which is 10, all over 2a, so 2 times 1 is 2. And here we have negative 5 plus or minus, and we have 25 minus 40, which is negative 15. And so this don't give us any real solutions. So in fact, the only solution to this equation we're interested in is x equals 2. Okay, and since it's an integer value, it fits with the conditions on this question. Okay, but what they want are the dimensions of the tank. So x equals 2, that was representing the base length and width, and then the height would just be 2 plus 3 is 5. So here, if we write out our answers, the dimensions would be 2 meters by 2 meters by 5 meters. Okay, so here, main thing is to start with a diagram, if you can relate it to something physical. Take the condition that you're given and use that to write an equation. And once you realize that it's a polynomial equation, follow the steps for solving a polynomial equation. Okay, that's it for this one.